Well, we're here at the amazing J5 Ranch. We just had the first CHTO Chubby Turner Clinic. And we've got Terrell Houston, who is one of the participants. And we're just going to be speaking to Terrell today because we want to hear about your journey into, right. into cutting and what you've experienced so far. Okay. So tell us how you got introduced to cutting. Well, I, um, my great-grandfather was into horses and, you know, and back then that's how they made a living. And so after my dad and my uncles come about, uh, but they left Texas and moved to Oklahoma. So when I came about, I missed that whole generation gap. So when I came back to Texas to stay here, I got into horses. I've always had a love for horses. But one day I was going to ride and just learn some things, work on my balance, work on my speed and agility, things like that. And a nice lady introduced me to cutting. She asked me what it was and I was like, I didn't have no clue what it was, but it ended up being a flag machine, the inflatable cow on like a 40 foot zip line, just going back and forth. And I was like, oh, I wanna do that. So I started doing that and let's say five, maybe six weeks later, I'm here talking to you. That's amazing. So <laughs> yeah. what, what is it about um, the sport that really captured you? Is it the feeling in the saddle? Is it having that um, control over the cow? What is it? It's, Just the, it's the adrenaline rush, first and foremost. I truly enjoy that. But the fact of that your horse can bend down and work with the cow and at that same level and you just stay locked and loaded the whole time is like I love it and I love the fact that it's a challenge it's not easy it's it's not easy not even the from the balance to the understanding the actual game that you're playing and the reason why you're playing it so I, I love a big challenge like that so have you competed at a cutting yet no never so what's the plan <laughs> the plan is um Keep working at it, work on my balance, work on my speed, work on the knowledge actually of the sport, learn it more and start off in an amateur class and Lord willing and the creek don't rise, I'll be competing there pretty soon. So, so once you got that first taste, when, right. when your, your friend introduced you to it, right. how did you find a way to, to learn more about it? Is there much cutting around where you live? In, in all honesty, the, the internet. Like, I, when I'm at work all day or when I get off work and I'm at home, I'm Googling everything. Uh, it led to YouTube videos of the Futurity and Mercuria and all of the World Finals, the Super Stakes. I started watching the footage and once I started learning the footage, I dissect the footage and all of that. And then I said, okay, well, I need to find somebody who actually does this, like in their backyard or at their ranch. And I started Googling more and more and I found J5. I found Constance via Facebook and I had no clue I was even talking to her. And then from that, she told me about this and I started saving my pennies. And I was like, oh, I'm, I won't miss this because I've never, I've never seen or been that close to live cattle outside of taking a road trip like back home to Oklahoma City or something. Well, now this weekend you really threw yourself into the deep end because right. um, the Chubby Turner Clinic was the first time you actually cut live cattle. Right. Tell us about that experience. It was, it was beautiful. It was, I wish they had already made a word in the dictionary for how good it felt, but it was, First and foremost, them calves are, they're fast. And the whole lot faster than that remote control thing. So everything, everything was fast at first. And then once I got in the pocket, I realized I was back in my living room and I was watching footage. So everything just slowed down. And I'm listening to Chubby in one ear and I'm slowing everything down in the other ear. All while trying to hang on. So exactly, it's not the easiest sport because right. you've got you know you the horse and the cow and right. somehow you got to bring it all together. Exactly. Were, were there moments where you thought oh, this is hard or this is absolutely not out of control? Absolutely not. I when I walked into it, when I walked into the situation, I said, you know what? If you aim for the moon and you just so happen to miss, at least you land on a star. So. I was gonna, I was gonna go for it regardless. 
confidence is key. So the whole time I was just, oh, I got this. Oh, I got this. Never let them see you sweat. So I was on it. So what have you learned about um, cutting? What, what are your big takeaways from this weekend? Patience and persistence. Patience and persistence that get you through anything. You can't rush the cut. You can't rush the cow. You can't force the issue. You gotta hurry up and wait. You gotta have patience. But as you're being patient and you're starting to work that cow, you have to be persistent. You can't, you can't kick them all the way that way and then forget about it on the next one. You have to be persistent. You gotta stay with it. So, so has it made you hungrier? This of course, experience? absolutely. Absolutely. Uncle Chubby told me I needed to move in. So, <laughs> so I'm packing my bags actually right now. So I'm going to move in. So you're even keener and you've got some goals? Yes. Um, first thing, continue to come back here, work more on my balance, work more on my riding ability. And then from there, start focusing more on the cow. Even when I told you when I study footage, I'm focused on the rider. Like I look at the rider's feet. I look at the rider's hands, then I focus on their eyes. I never pay attention to the cow until I got here. Because he told me, never take your eyes off the cow. And I was like, oh, wow, now I'm going to have to go watch some more film and look at something totally different. So a little bit of that that I take from there and what I'm already doing and putting it in the pot and go make some good gumbo out of it. So it's going to be good. So, I mean, you're a real role model for people who've been looking at cutting from the, you know, from the mm. outside and wanting to get right. in. You don't have a horse. You don't necessarily have an area where there's a trainer or people around you who cut. Absolutely And you not. haven't let that put you off. No. The only limitations you ever have are those you place upon yourself. So you got to go get it by, by any means. If you want it that bad, go get it. So nobody's going to stop you but you. So I said, hmm, well, there's somebody who's got some horses. I need to find them. And I'm pretty sure they got a whole bunch of them, and they don't mind. I mean, hey, if one guy's got 50 horses, I'm sure he don't mind letting you use number 36 to go work on whatever it is you're working on. So I just use the internet. Like the internet brought us all together, as cliche as that might sound, but it, it's that's, true. that's what happened. And what's your advice to other people who would love to? get involved in cutting, but they think it's too hard or they don't have a horse or they don't have the, the supporter or a trainer or they think it's too expensive. What's your advice to them? I would tell them to change their circle of influence. Exposure and expectations. Get around, change your circle of influence. Get around somebody who's gonna push you to be great. The good can always be great. The great can always be phenomenal. You just get around good people and good energy. Your circle of influence means a whole lot. And once you have that positive spirit on you, nobody can stop you. It's, it, it's nothing like your best friend or your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, whoever, somebody pushing you to be great. You don't have to keep that secret bottled in. You're just like, hey, I want to do this. And somebody's like, go do it. Who do we need to talk to? And I'm just like, that's your circle of influence. That's, that's what you need. Never give up, never give in. So I just, I'll go get it by any means. That's awesome. So, you know, you've got, you've got what you're going to work on with your cutting. Right. How, how, what else did you get out of the weekend, you know, in terms of the people you've met and I enjoy every, everything that I got from everybody. I truly enjoyed everybody's spirit. I, the, the clinic is over with. The, we all had a great time and this is the end, but it was the journey. The journey I enjoyed the most. I mean, from small conversations out on the porch to conversations in the arena and outside and at night during dinner, during breakfast, doesn't matter. Those conversations from everybody else, even though <laughs> Uncle Chubby said I'm greener than snot. <laughs> 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 no, so I, but I can, I, I can share something with somebody and I told him, hey, I noticed how tense you were. If you just breathe and you just relax because we having fun at the end of the day we having fun no matter that the cameras are rolling and for them to accept that and i don't know nothing i'm five six weeks into this thing and then they give me some back too and then we can shake hands we can hug it out and it's just i appreciated the journey everybody comes from all over and i'm just like these people took 14, 15 hour drives to be here. And I'm like, geez, I was only like an hour and 10 minutes away. But 
I found out how big and how great and how much these people appreciate it and it, and it made me want to, it made me appreciate not only the opportunity and Chubby and the clinic and everything, but those people. Those people were all a part of the journey and I, I really appreciated them for that. Well, thanks for being a part of it and best of luck of with your cutting journey. Thank you. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent.